Welcome to Veterans on the Home Front. I'm Kevin Keller, your host. Thank you out to AmVets Post 24 here in Dayton for our sponsoring this program. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Tonight, our guest is Tiffany Knight Wills. She's the chief of the CDCE at the Dayton VA. Um, first, we're gonna start off, Tiffany, with you're a veteran, so tell us a little bit about your military service. Absolutely, happy to. Um, I'm an Army vet. I was in the Army for about 10 and a half years. I was a medic, medic who. Um, and so I, I served several different areas. It was just a pleasure to serve the veterans as well as serve the soldiers, as well as serve my country. Did you get a chance to go to Iraq, Afghanistan, Desert Storm? I don't know what period you served. So, so I did not. So I was in from 2006 to 2016. Um, I did go overseas to Korea, but that's about as far as I got. It was, it was quite an interesting time over there in Korea, but it was an enjoyable experience all around. Yeah, I've been to Korea for a short time, team spirit and all that. Yeah, that uh, can be very interesting. Yes, yes it can. Definitely, for sure. <laughs> Camp Casey, especially. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. We don't go there because everybody probably knows about that out there. If you don't, you probably don't need to. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about volunteering at the VA. Yes. So since you're the chief, the big dog in charge, <laughs> so, so to speak, um, for most of the veterans, especially the veterans organizations, we go by, we have our, our group is the VA, v, v, VAVS. VAVS, thank yes. you. VA Volunteer Services, which all of our groups have reps and all of that. Um, so now, though, you're all going by CDCE? Yes. That's C -D -C -E. a mouthful. It is. It's the longest name in the world. Why? I don't know. But... Um, CDCE is the Center for Development and Civic Engagement. So it's formally known as voluntary service. It really just helps to encompass everything that we do. So from volunteer management to management of all donations to philanthropic engagement, such as times like this. So it kind of just is that umbrella. Sounds like it's a way to give you more work. It is. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, don't forget to give Darren a lot of that. Just I, saying that. I hope you're listening, Darren, because I'm going to, you know, Fair. Yes. <laughs> uh, he needs more work because he doesn't have enough. Okay. Um, for somebody who wants to be a volunteer, Absolutely. What, what's the process? So the process is first, you would want to either call or email. Um, calling is just fine. Um, the number is 937-262-2162. And you're welcome to call. Any of my team can help you. They'll set you up with an individual or a group orientation. That orientation, they'll give you all the information that you need, as well as have you fill out the application packet. From there, you'll have to do some fingerprinting because we are a federal we are a federal campus. Um, so you'll do fingerprinting and do a very um, a very basic background check. Uh, you'll need to also have a flu shot. You'll need to have all of those different things together um, and bring them with you. You can get a TB test on site that day and just bring your passion for volunteerism and we got gotcha. you. Outstanding. Um, now, I know at, I think it was the last quarterly meeting we had, which uh -huh. we'll go over later, but um, there were some of the veterans volunteering, other different groups are saying it was taken it took months, yes. same like year, just to get complete the process. Mm -hmm. Now, I know from fact now it doesn't. Um, I hate to talk good about Darren again, but because um, I, I put my paperwork in mid, mid May, mm -hmm. and by within a month, I was working. Yes. So, and I went through the whole process. So that process has been streamlined. So, um, how long does it usually take, really, to, I mean, as, it can take about a month, uh, two months at the max. It was taking six to nine months, sometimes a year to get people onboarded, but we've created a one-stop shop. So we call it our potential volunteer onboarding. So it's a streamlined way to kind of get everybody on board and get them going because you want to volunteer. So let's get you to doing that because our veterans love seeing our volunteers. So um, that is what we've created to kind of streamline that, bring it together one month, two months tops, and you're in. Yeah, I was surprised. It, I mean, it was really quick the way the process was. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you got the paperwork in, it was uh, 
quick class and all the stuff and IDs and fingerprint and, and testing and it was done and so it was really nice because um, you'd hear a lot of the older been doing yes. been forever so okay um, where exactly excuse me at the VA are you located so we're located in building 305 and building 305 is actually um, diagonal to the main office or the main hospital which is building 330. Um, so if you come into building 3, 305 we are the first hallway to the right. Anybody ask anybody in that building they'll tell you exactly where, how to get to us. We're pretty easy to find. I know there's a sign that says volunteer services not CDCE. That's, That's correct. How it's, it's right there on there. You walk in the door you'll <laughs> Look to the left a little bit, you'll see it. Um, okay, uh, the options, what are somebody's options that they want to volunteer? How? Absolutely. So we have regular volunteers, which usually volunteer at least four hours a, four hours a week. And then we have occasional volunteers, people who can come in and volunteer in different events and things like that. Um, but if you want to be a regular volunteer, we have several options. One is uh, we have a virtual option, and that is our Compassionate Contacts Corps. So our volunteers with the Compassionate Contacts Corps, they are paired up with veterans telephonically, and they talk to the veteran telephonically for, um, you know, just talking about hobbies or what have you. So you are paired up with a veteran who may be experiencing social isolation or things like that. So it's really just to help them have an outlet and have them help them have some company. And right. so that has been really, really an amazing program. Another option is our shuttle cart drivers, or our, we lovingly call them our golf cart drivers. Mm -hmm. um, you may see them if you come to the VA. They kind of roll around in those golf carts. And so they are there to help get veterans from the parking lot to the main facility um, for their appointments, wherever they're going, but just to kind of cut out on some of that walking time. Um, we also have the valet service, but those don't want, that don't want to use it, our golf cart drivers are roaming the parking lots. Um, also, we have our Red Coat Ambassador volunteers, and those are our volunteers that help support throughout the medical center. So they help support with an exceptional customer service to our nation's heroes. So they work at the front desk, they help with wayfinding, they help with pushing veterans in wheelchairs here or there. They really are our ambassadors to the VA, so they're kind of the face. So when you come and walk in the VA and you see those veterans or those um, volunteers in red coats, those are our red coat ambassadors. And then lastly, I mean, we have other options as well, but these are the main four. The other one is our honor squad. And our honor squad really helps to give our veterans their absolute final salute. So they help and partner with the cemetery and they help to give those final salute to our veterans as they have their end of life um, services to send them home. And so they work rain, sleet and snow, but they definitely need volunteers as, you know, people are, you know, people go on vacation and all of these things. And we mm -hmm. want to send our nation's heroes to their resting place with serious honor and dignity. You see them around there quite a bit, actually. Yeah. So now I know now if they if you volunteer at least four hours, you get a meal ticket. Meal ticket. So uh, <laughs> it's nine dollars, but it's nine dollars you don't have to pay for. So That's right. it works out very well. I use it every Wednesday. Yes. So, um, did I hear though? You guys have got a van now for the parking lot. We do. We do. So, um, American Legion Auxiliary actually donated a van uh, for the parking lot. So you'll see it quite a bit, especially during the colder season. Um, so it has heating. It has all of the bells and whistles. Outstanding. And it says shuttle cart van on the side. So you'll see it. It's a black van. Um, it is a Pacifica, so you'll see our uh, shuttle cart drivers driving it around. If you see them, flag them down. They're there to pick you up. Yep. Outstanding. Always use more, though. So Absolutely. Okay, so that's our options. Okay, why, I mean, you're the VA, you have all these employees, mm -hmm. so why it would be volunteering be so important at our VA? Oh, volunteers are the backbone of what we do at the VA. They are there to help augment. They are there uh, because our employees, they're, we're there for exceptional customer service. We love it. But our, our, 
our volunteers are able to pay attention to those fine details, that extra smile, that mm -hmm. extra helping hand, that extra, you know, person to chat with, whatever that looks like. Our volunteers are really the backbone of what we do. We love our volunteers. I don't know how many veterans come in every day and they're saying, oh my gosh, the volunteers helped me do this or that. So they really help where maybe an employee might not be able to get freed up or what have you, especially the front desk. Our front desk employees, they are usually bombarded with questions. And so those volunteers are there and they're invaluable because they're able to answer some of those questions to really kind of get our veterans where they need to be sooner. Yeah, they've helped me get around quite a bit. And even though I volunteer there, I still yeah. have to go up there and help. And she, young lady up there, helps me out. So um, we have veterans volunteering and regular and, and non-veterans, but what about student volunteer? Do we have a student volunteer program? We sure do. Yes, we do. We have a summer youth volunteer program. And so it usually starts, um, applications start in April. And by June, June-ish, they start volunteering. So it's a six-week program. And so we, it's, it is a competitive program. So we go out to the schools. We let the schools know through their counselors, uh, the student would go ahead and fill out an application. That application would come to us. We require an essay. And oh, wow. yeah, we require an essay. We review all of them. And then we also do an interview process. And the reason is we want students to experience those things because maybe we're the first interview that they experience before they get a job. And so we want to give them that opportunity. And then we are very selective. We select, we had, I believe, nine student volunteers last year. And they also had shadowing experiences with medical providers, if that's what they wanted. But they helped with projects around the facility. It really is to enhance them and to introduce them to the veteran population to really pass on the value of who our veterans are. Well, an essay? Yeah! What, what, what are they doing essays on in this? So why do you want to volunteer at the VA? So they have to tell us why. Because we don't want to have students there on their phones or what have you. We right. want people who really want to be an asset and to learn about the VA and our veterans and maybe have a connection. Yeah. Yeah. That's, wow, that's a serious process. Oh, yeah. Wow. Glad I didn't have to do this. <laughs> I wouldn't be volunteering there on Wednesdays otherwise. You just don't know you have to yet. Yeah, no, well, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> My lovely wife will have to help me out with that one. <laughs> Love you, honey. Um, okay, uh, donations. Because mm -hmm. we talked about that actually in the intro when you were talking about CDCE. Um, what kind of donations are we looking for, need, accept? So we always have a donation list, and that can be located online at, the date, at DaytonVA.gov. So you can always go online and see our donation list. But we're always accepting donations for our homeless veterans. So we always need shoes. We need clothes. And the clothes have to be new. Um, we don't accept any used clothes. Now we are around the holiday season. So we are always accepting, we have a, an adopt a family program. So you can a absolutely reach out to us if you want to adopt one of our veteran families. Um, we accept socks and shoes and jackets. Jackets are a big thing right now because it's getting cold. And some of our homeless veterans, we, we pass out jackets to them, um, hats and gloves. Uh, we also accept any kind of canned goods that are non-expired um, because we have a few mini pantries on, on campus as well, mini food pantries. So right. if you want the full list, you can definitely go to the website or call us and we're happy to send that to you. But right now, winter items are very, very needed. Okay, and I've encompassed this or come across this multiple times and we, you and I have talked about this mm -hmm. a couple of times on this. Um, there's individuals out there who think that the VA, our Dayton VA, is closed to volunteers, to people come in and doing bingo or mm -hmm. whatever the else may be. So since you're here, this is one of the questions I wanted to throw out to you. Is the Dayton VA open for volunteers to come in and do bingo or whatever else may be? Absolutely. Okay. We are absolutely open. 
reach out to my team, get yourself scheduled, get your organization scheduled, come on out. Our veterans love, love, love the engagement. And what I'm understanding, the, about every weekend in December is pretty much packed. Yes, December is packed, period. Um, we really encourage people because our, our veterans will get all of these events during, during the months of December, but right after that, it really falls off. So just to kind of keep that engagement and giving, that, giving them that positive well-being of connection, we encourage you to, you know, January, February on. So please reach out if you're interested. Yeah, yeah. Do, some, do something on it. Now, I know at the one quarterly meeting we uh, had, and I don't remember her name, she was talking about they were putting together a place to do bingo in a store or something downstairs or somewhere? Yes, Julie. Julie so Julie yes. is one of my team. Um, we are getting, it's called the Comfort Corner. Okay. And it is in our community living center, which is our which is our long term care facility, um, on, and it's building 320. And so we'll be having a comfort corner where we'll have different items that you know veterans can come and get from that area. And those are going to be our senior citizen, our older silver year um, veterans that are living in our long term care facility. And it really just gives them the power of choice. And so we want to offer them. They, have, they can pick two items every time they come visit, and it gives them the power to be able to choose what they like from the store. Now, are we doing food or anything else in there? Or is it no just food. no food items, right? No okay. food or drinks. No food or drinks. Only, you know, hats. And they love hats. So any, any of the service hats, you know, Army, Navy, all of those um, hats with, with um, American flags on them, uh, we, little um, blankets and different things like that will be in that in that area for them to get. All right, you hear that. If you're listening to this, make sure that you're listening to that. Let's get some stuff out there, get it donated out to the VA, to the Comfort Corner. Comfort Corner. Comfort Corner, yeah. help out our veterans. Let's get out there and do that. Uh, now that it's wide open, um, but again, if COVID rears its ugly head for some reason, I might roll it back for a little bit, but stand by, pile it up, and we'll ship it out as soon as it's over. That's right. Um, okay, now I know this because I've been there. Uh, for the volunteer services, mm -hmm. we have a quarterly meeting. Yes. So, and tell us about that. Tell everybody about that. So our VAVS meeting, it's the VA Voluntary Service. It is the advisory committee. And so we, we meet quarterly. And we meet quarterly to give you updates on what's happening in CDCE, what's happening at the Dayton VA, as well as to hear from you. Because really our VABS committee is what steers a lot of what we do for our veterans. It steers a lot of the events, it steers a lot of, and has a lot of impact on how we help to service and better provide care and service to our veterans. So we really enjoy being able to connect. There's always lunch. Always lunch, and it's always, <laughs> and both times I've been, it's been really good. I always make sure there's lunch, and, and so. Mission Barbecue was there the first time Mission I was Mission Barbecue there. was the very first time. I mean, what's the best way to connect with people? Break bread. Exactly. So we can't thank you monetarily, but we can thank you by word of mouth and saying thank you for what you do and feeding you, right? Exactly. So we enjoy being able to have you come out and being able to update you and being able to hear from you because that's the biggest part. You are the voice of the veteran. And that's, that is one good thing that it, it, everybody gets a voice. Yes. But the problem is, we need more VAVS reps. Yes, we do. We need all of the representatives from all the groups, whether it's the regular, whether it's vol or, uh, auxiliary, the SUNS, all the groups, all the veterans groups, non-for-profit veterans get out here and become a VAVS rep, put the paperwork in, get it out to her office um, so everybody can have a say-so on what's going on. And you can hear it directly from Tiffany and, and all the others. and. One thing I was really surprised up at the meetings when I when started going that the director and all of the line the all of the uh, uh, chain of command so to speak since it's a military thing yeah uh, chain of command is is usually there if possible absolutely so she's right there taking notes and got the book and writing down things and yes. um, because uh, uh, Robert 
Frost and I, who work up at ICU for the DAV, uh, we brought up on that Thursday that the TV wasn't working because of the construction up in ICU. We told you guys on Thursday, when I came in on Wednesday, it was operation. That's right. Fully operational, so which made a big difference for our, the families, for our veterans, um, so that they could, uh, some of them are up there for, unfortunately, a long time and uh, everything, but it does help out a little bit. So just those little things sometimes can mean the most. But, um, and you have a Veterans Day Parade November 9th at 11 a.m. Yes, we do. Come on out. So it'll be held on our campus. It's at 11 a.m. The Veterans Day Parade is, this is the third annual. We have floats, we have JROTCs, we have a beauty queen, Mrs. Ohio American will be in the parade. Wow. Um, yes, we have uh, therapy horses that'll be in the parade. We oftentimes have, and I think this year, we have superheroes again in the parade. I'm not in the parade, am I? I don't Superhero. think you are. Why? You know what? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> So we have, it, come on out, it's fun, we have food, we have food trucks, uh, we have a kids corner, so a little kids area, play, play area, we have a DJ, it is a lot, lot, lot of fun. So we ask you to come out, we also have, the biggest part about it is the resource fair. So we have a resource fair with all of the resources for our veterans in the Dayton community. And they come in Building 305 and our veterans are able to come out and take part and to learn about what's available to them. Yeah, and I was kind of surprised. I, I, I mean, I got to say I really learned a lot at the VAVS meeting because I really didn't know a lot of the stuff that the VA was doing out there. I mean, we just you just had the car show out there. Yes which was really good. You know, the wife and I, my wife and I, and my son was all out there. Uh, very, a lot of different vendors, a lot of different cars. Um, we had the, just had the uh, Abraham Lincoln statue dedication. Yes. It was a full blown event. It wasn't nothing small or simple. Um, and the uh, calendar of events we passed out with, there's like multiple things going on every month. It's uh, all the branches are pretty much uh, honored on their on their anniversaries on their birthdays yes. so there you got a lot going on out there so um it's and you just renamed the one the women's clinic did we not yes uh, to the colonel charity adams early yes 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 and actually there'll be an entry and her family her her children will be part of the parade as well so oh, outstanding yeah outstanding. so we're really excited and then if if I'm not mistaken, you guys have a, uh, every summer you've got a fruit, vegetable, yes. uh, we, something going on? A farmer's market. Farmer's market, that's the word yes. I'm trying to think of. Yes, and don't, don't get me wrong on the dates. I think it starts in May and it goes to October. So October 31st will be our final day for the farmer's market. And we are having a, a um, fall festival. So it's the last day, fall festival. It's gonna be Halloween. So it's going to be on the 31st, it'll be Halloween. So costumes, it's gonna be a Halloween themed um, thing. Come on out, it's fun. You can always get some good produce. We have a local farmer who brings out all kinds of produce, moms, all that stuff. Oh. That's uh, to me. It just blows my mind. There's so much. There's a lot more going on. It's just not just only the VA hospital. It's just a lot of events going on throughout the year. Yeah. I mean, all year. I mean, it just. If you think of something else, let her know. Maybe they can bring it up. That's right. Uh, so, anything else besides the Veterans Day parade coming up soon after? Um, we have quite a few things happening on campus. Uh, you can always find out by calling the VA because we, we always have information to give out. But right now, the big thing is going to be the Veterans Day Parade that's coming up next. Um, and then we are doing all kinds of different holiday, um, holiday events for our veterans. So if you're interested, please call CDCE. We're always looking for volunteers to come help, help out with that kind of thing. Again, volunteer stuff. Yeah. That's, uh... Veterans, get out there. If you got some time, you don't have to be four hours. You can be as little as an hour or two. Yeah. Whatever you can spare. Whatever. So uh, come on out, volunteer, go through the process. Uh, come out and help our veterans. Some of them up there don't have anybody, um, so we can hopefully help them out. Yes. Now, I understand through the last, the last VAS meeting, too, is 
um, they were saying something about carts to push around the hospital? Yes, so that's called the comfort cart. And so we have comfort carts, we have them in the main tower, which is the main hospital, but we also have it in building 320, which is our senior living center, our right. community living center. And those carts have all kinds of little items. Now I will tell you one of the hot topics and the hot commodities is the, I don't know what the game is called, but it's a pyramid with the pegs and yes. you can only get it at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> My team has to go get those because they request them. So, oh, wow. So, so we're always looking for those donations. <laughs> but um, we have little games and things for them to do. We have mouthwash and deodorant and puzzle books as well as, you know, readers. You don't know how many people come to the hospital and they don't know they're going to be admitted. And maybe they forgot their glasses at home and different yeah. things like that. So we always try to make sure that the stay is as comfortable as possible. And we try to make sure that the well-being of our veterans come first. Outstanding. Yeah. Thank you, Tiffany, for Thank coming you. today and giving us all this information. Um, and thank you for your service and for helping our veterans, of course, um, continuing. Um, and that's our show for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, thanks for our MVETS Post 24 uh, at 1016 Leo Street here in Dayton. If you get a chance, stop by, see us, uh, hang out with the RL, all of our veterans. Thank you and good evening.